Welcome back to the Unconquered Podcast Patreon film session breakdown looking at the Clemson Florida State game. We're going to make quick work of this because quite frankly it's unpleasant and there's not a whole lot of reason to spend a bunch of time on this. But we're we're going to make a quick one here. So a few things here right off the bat. Number 1, take note of what happens when you have arguably the nation's number 1 receiver recruit from a couple of years ago. This would be great if uh you know they'd show the safeties. But um Note that they've got two different play actions here. This is all designed to get Florida State bringing, rotating the safety down. They know that if they jet sweep action, they're going to get the safety rotating down. They're going to get the one-on-one -on -one here that they want. And then Lawrence, well, he looks healthy again. And there's just not much you can do there. I mean, this is a situation where you've got a 5'9 corner who's in good coverage. This is fine. This is actually not bad, but you've got a, you know, 6'4 six, four, six, four receiver. There's just not much you can do there. So open the game by declaring your physicality, and now they break tendency and put themselves in a position to, once again, take advantage of, notice they're going at Asante Samuel Jr. once again with a big, with a big corner or a big receiver. And this is, again, this is good coverage. And Florida State's got a nice blitz here off the edge. Not a bad job. This is okay. This is good by Amari Gaynor. That's, that's good physicality here. A little hands to the face, but that's good coverage. And all of a sudden, two plays, they're down inside the, uh, the, 15, inside the 20 yard line. And, you know, that's that's not good. Now, this here, this is pretty simple. The job of the edge guy here, this is Amari Gaynor. His job, he's got to keep a clean outside shoulder, yes. But his job is to compress this H back into the C gap here. And that's just too wide. You can't come that wide. You can't come that far upfield if you're the edge guy here. That opens up a seam where he's able to see all of that. That should be – he should be sinking his hips and forcing this H-back to keep position right here. The H-back is able to get that. That's too much. If the H-back's feet have to stay right here because he's getting compressed and basically you squat on this and force him to bounce this, that's what you want, well, then you've got a chance. But that's not good enough. They're able to get a double team here on the four technique. Four technique can't get reached here. He's got to get a little better outside position. The one technique gets turned and reached. And that's, <laughs> look at the athletic play by the center here. And they've had some really good centers recently. This is this is another really good center. Watch this. He spins out and then finds the, the backer and gets his hands on him. That's really good. That's I mean, that's a dancing bear right there. Gets back. So you get the double team here. Warner is too tight. Gets caught here. He can't he can't get caught. He can't get reached there by that double team. He's got to keep a free arm there. Not enough reaction here, but they've just slowed him down with that halfback pass. And now you've got ETN into the second level. So this is this is a lot of problems all at once on the defensive front, just not not good enough ac across the board as a unit. I also, I suspect somebody's misaligned here. I think Warner might need to be bumped because you shouldn't have the H back here and then have, you've got B gap and then you've got your D gap really. And then you should have a C gap player here. Somebody, I think, is misaligned up front against where they've got the H back. So I think this should be rotated over a little bit. Uh, my suspicion is that this should this front is 
is flipped to the wrong side by the backers, but I might be wrong. Uh, either way, there's nobody in this gap. You do need to compress that down, but somebody has to be has to be getting to that gap. Right now, there's nobody in the C gap by alignment. That's the other problem. So, but he gets too easily reached. There's nobody in the C gap by alignment. If he's the C gap player, he's misaligned. If he's the C gap player, he needs to crash that, and then you've got no D gap player. So they're misaligned. They've got to be misaligned here. And then you combine that with too easily getting blocked, too easily getting blocked there, too easily getting blocked there, letting yourself get blocked wide, and now you have an easy eight-yard run. I mean, that's just easy. Now, this is much better. They're in 21 here, so two tights, and that's a balanced front. Florida State then matches up with a balanced front, and they're you know putting their bigs in place. And this is where you can start to see uh, Marvin Wilson and some of those guys flex their muscle. This is too tight. I don't like where Dontavious Jackson is lined up. I mean, I guess he's coming, but yeah, if he's blitzing, that's okay. That that puts him in a in a good spot, and he does a good job with penetration, so I take that back. Wilson gets pushed back too far. He's he's too he's too high here. If you're gonna come inside, you'd better come inside low and hard. But Dontavious Jackson does a good job creating taking on that, that tight end and creating a uh, a seam for Fagan to come in and make the tackle and then this is really good on the backside. Nobody nobody blocks Durden. That's really where it, where it's hard for a four technique. That's a missed assignment by their tackle. Durden gets in there and they make a good they make a good play there. This isn't terrible. Actually, this is pretty terrible by Adonis Thomas. You've got the puller here on the edge. He needs to hit this super hard. First of all, you can't let yourself get hooked. But second of all, you need to take this on and push him. You need to you need to take his legs right now. Submarine that. But either way, pretty good from the other uh, other two. That's not bad. So now fourth down. And they break tendency one more time and this is this is three times on the first drive that Clemson has broken tendency in terms of what they do. What you're expecting here from this alignment is basically them to run some sort of rub route up here at the top that they love to run. And Florida State's going to bring some extra pressure to try to eliminate that. And that's that. But here's the other thing. I think the front's misaligned again. He's over the he's over the guard. Somebody's got to be responsible for these two gaps here, and they're just they're out of their gaps. When they pull that backside backer, when the pull happens, some they're 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 a gap short on the front side once again. Now, yeah, Clemson. Clemson is breaking tendency once again here. But you can't be a gap short. When they pull, you've got to have somebody fill fill where that puller is. And with this pull, you, you also have to have the, uh, the safety come up earlier. It's just too easy. Just they, they took a, they took advantage of some misalignment up front, took advantage of, uh, of, of Florida State not being in proper gaps, gap control not very good uh, on this. And once again, You've got your B gap defender. You've got your A gaps. You got your B gap defender. You've got your C and D, and then you've got a secondary defender. But over here, where's your? You've got your, I guess your C and your D. Your D your D is here. You're gonna have to have somebody else as support. So I guess B, C, 
and then your extra support. So let's take a look at this from the back side. He's in B gap, that's fine. He's in C gap. He's in D gap. That's okay. And now you've got the option. He's got to take quarterback. The issue is, once again, when you have the puller, you're one gap short. You've got to have the backer. Backer does not recognize. This has to be. This is on Dontavious Jackson, I think. He's got to recognize that the puller is coming across. That's your key. When you see that, you can't step forward. Because you've got somebody else here for that. That means you're a gap short on this side, and now you've got to, you've got to beat the puller to this side across that way he can crash and now you're the pursuit player but it's just not not good enough all right offensive side after a couple wasted downs trying to run the football and just getting pounded pretty good protection and max protection and they're coming with uh with five here not a bad throw I mean, these were there most of the day. Florida State had some had some advantages at receiver, but it wasn't enough, you know, if you can't block or throw. And here you're just short of the you're just short of the sticks. That's the problem. Throw brings him back, but what they're doing with the with the drop here, this forces the throw to be outside the window because if if Thomas is not dropping into the window here and if he throws this where he's supposed to which is here on time then that's a pick so he has to throw it further back and that's that's good design by Clemson here's the other problem though if he holds on to this for just a second so he can hit it up behind here and tuck that in then he gets hit so once you see the, the, the biggest problem is that he's going to get hit there in terms of this is just absolutely terrible pass protection. The next biggest problem is as soon as he sees the dropper here, instead of pulling him back there, he should know that there's a, a rush from this side. Come across. Look at the opening here. If Blackman recognizes what he's seeing blitz-wise here, This might score. If it doesn't score, it's a long play. Because you've got four, five rushers, six, seven, eight, nine, and then you've got a tenth down in the uh on the uh, on the receiver down here. There's nobody in the middle of the field. If he hits this right here, this is running for a long time. This is probably a thirty or forty yard gain minimum. He probably scores. I didn't see that live. I didn't notice that, that myself live. But when you see this blitz coming from this side, you see the dropper. See the dropper come off, come right here. Recognize where your, where your coverage is. And instead of a no conversion, you get a, you get a touchdown. It's not terrible. That's dumb. You see Fagan... What are you doing? That's pretty good from the defense here. This is your third and five. And when they got Clemson in third and long, it wasn't bad. And they've, they've used this kind of uh, blitz with some success. And you can see Gaynor's pretty good at making himself small. And you see Josh Brown with pretty good effort here from the edge. Not bad. Getting pressure, flushing flushing the quarterback you'd like to see a little better contain on this side but not bad by uh by Durden showing a high effort play to get out there get a stop once again third and eight after a couple of uh, abysmal running efforts and once again a free rusher Clemson did a good job of scheming against Florida State's max protect to get free rushers just like this. They're bringing two backers, and that's a shot. That hurts right there. 
but that should be passed off. They're doing a good job recognizing that the H back and the uh, and the tackles aren't always doing a good job passing off inside. This needs to be passed off, but he doesn't recognize the blitz. So Blackman has to get rid of that. And there's just not much you can do there. And there's really, I mean, this is a three three person route on third and eight. There's not much you can do here. There's no, nobody open and you're getting pounded. The only option is to try to throw short and they're in trap. See how he's sitting at the sticks and he's going to jump that. If you throw that short on the uh, on the smash, that's a, that's a pick. So this is pretty good. It's a good decision by Blackman. There's you got no chance. All right, moving forward. And this is just way too easy on second and three. You just got to do better here. With the pursuit inside out. Better angle. He's hesitating here. Get on your horse and you got to be going fast. See how he's, he's coming up a little bit? Don't slow down. You got to come fast to this spot. You got to know where he's going. And he just waits a little bit. And then at backer, you got to come downhill now. It's just not physical enough from, from Warner. Second and five here, and they're taking advantage of Josh Brown coming in hard against the against the run. This is an RPO. Watch his eyes. He's checking right here. When he sees Brown trigger, and he doesn't trigger that far, but he, he's got a big enough arm that that becomes real easy. Second and five. Now you got an eight-yard play. Brown's got to stay there just a little longer to take take that away. And again, first and 10, play action. And this is something they've been running a bunch all year. It looks to me like they're still misaligned in terms of, no, they're fine here because the, the tight end's here. But watch the reaction against the run. And then this is on Josh Brown. They're in, they're in a cover three here. He's got vertical. He's got to carry the vertical a little bit and pass him off, and then he's got to get out to the flat. This is just simple. And then he gets his ankles broken. And I mean, his job is to carry that vertical and pass him off to the corner, but you've got to get out to the edge a little quicker, and you can't get your ankles broken. It's just too easy. That's embarrassing. They're just more physical. And again, let's take a look at the edge. I mean, this is one of the smallest tight ends you'll ever see at Clemson. And you see... Samuel come too far upfield here. They've got a... They've got two guys coming inside. Samuel's too far upfield. That opens the seam. And they took advantage of this on Florida State's edge all day. Is this guy not compressing the blocker, but instead trying to run around it? And then in the inside-out pursuit not being, not being quick enough to get there. So see how big this is? Because he doesn't take on the blocker here. And then from the outside, he's got to be coming forward now. And he just gets, that's, that's just not good enough. Gets pushed in. You've got to come downhill now. That's got to be compressed. This is just poor, poor run, run defense, poor soundness in terms of run principles from the front. Once again, tendency breaker. They love power lead, or they, or they love uh, this toss power combo. But all year, they've liked to either give this. They also like to toss that out. Florida State's ready for the toss. What they're not ready for 
is to play back and against the puller. So Florida State has two guys on the toss. Nobody coming forward on this. And once again, this is Dent not having eye discipline. Eye discipline needs to be – he's got to be coming across with the uh, – with the puller, but as soon as you, see, he's got to be able to see the the or with the uh, with the jet, he's got to see the puller, and recognize that he's got su support right now, and Warner gets reached too easily. Gainer, the biggest problem here is Gainer has to his job. Yeah, based on what Florida State's in personnel wise and and front wise here, Gainer's job here is to spill this. He's got to come really tight here. As soon as he recognizes that they're all down blocking, he's got to expect the pull. And he's got to come tight to the line of scrimmage. And what you want to see is you want to see him you want to see him take out the legs of this lead puller. And if he does that, then you actually take out both pullers. So you create a pile right here and you've got no you've got no lead blocks. That allows you then, since the ball wasn't handed off, that allows you to have a support player and a support player that are unblocked. But because Gaynor finesses this and catches it, he doesn't want to dip that shoulder. And you dip that shoulder and you take out the knees of this lead puller. He crashes into that one. And now when Lawrence pulls this back, you've got a pile here. Lawrence has to go wide. And now you've got two guys to support that. So this is completely 100% on Gainer for not playing physical enough for catching here. He doesn't want any part of that puller. And now you've got him get blocked. Now you've got the next puller that is able to get to the safety. One guy doesn't do his job here. Crash that, take out both pullers. And that's, that's not only not a touchdown, that's a loss. That's eight yards just because Gaynor doesn't do his job. Florida State's edge players were abysmal in this game. And this shows how seriously Florida State took this game, that, that Lawrence was running on drive one and drive two. This is drive three, I think. But first quarter, Lawrence is already running the football. That's when you know that they're taking this seriously. It's a nice little design here. Little orbit motion, little yo yo orbit. Nice little tendency breaker from Florida State here. Pull in, pull in, and then come up with the shovel. Not bad. And now you've got Hornybrook. I don't know what he's doing here, but your best bet here. There, oh, okay, so you've got a bust at the bottom. I'm pretty sure this is a bust from Terry. So this should be a block out, block up. Terry comes back for the screen. It's an RPO, and Terry thinks he's blocking. Yep, and so Hornybrook's looking for that, and this... If you're Hornybrook, the last thing you want to do is hold on to this and run. You need to throw this over the head of these guys out of bounds. Instead, you end up with a with a loss of one instead of no gain. This is horrible. You've got a nice route here by the by the by the sophomore by Harrison, this is just a little dig, and they get him one on one against Tanner Muse, who can't run with him. And Hornybrook, for one thing, why does he signal? What is he signaling? Just pull the trigger, and there's no pressure here. He should have he should be sliding up, set his feet, slide up, and make an easy throw instead of sliding up, undisciplined, throw on the move. There's a there's a this is one of the plays where there's actually a good pocket. This is okay. This is fine. Slide right to here, make that throw right down the seam. And that's a touchdown.
Watch this. From his angle, you got a little mesh. That's okay. What is he signaling? I thought live maybe he was going for Terry here, but he's definitely going for uh, for Harrison. This is just horrible. And it's all because look at where his feet and his arms are. I mean, it looks like he's throwing a Frisbee here. Coming across his body and just kind of trying to spin that down. If he sets his feet and puts this foot in the ground and gets everything going here, the ball should be delivered right there. Put that ball back here. This is a touchdown. Nobody back here can run and catch Harrison. That's an easy score. And instead, it's a turnover. And this shows you how well the secondary played. I mean, there, there's nobody open here. You know, I, w I would love to see the downfield here. Can't because they're not showing the safeties. But that's pretty good. They still get 10 yards. Ultimately, because they just don't have edge guys that are capable of managing contain there. It's better in the run in the run game here, but he's got to trigger down faster and make a tackle. That's just very poor from Warner. Make the tackle at one yard. infuriating and once again the problem here you've got all this beef inside you got to win those matchups Cooper's playing too high I think he's gotten tired by this point they're able to push him back they're able to double team Cooper they're able to double team Durden combo into the second level and then Nice run. Nice physical run. And Dent is playing like a high schooler here. This is so not physical. That's embarrassing. Come up and make a, make a hit square and use your arms. I do not know why the secondary thinks that they're such big guys that if they just throw their shoulder into guys, they're going to go down, but they've been doing it all year. It's inexcusable how often the secondary has done this once again you have a tendency breaker and they are running Lawrence Clemson you know Clemson is serious about the game when they're running their quarterback they only ran Lawrence late against UNC they're running him in the first quarter second quarter against Florida State nice play by uh by Lawrence and you notice that they that that they've got uh they've got 44 here they've got Gant playing the edge in their delta package on third and five not good enough on the edge I mean he does have have that Josh Brown gets double teamed here and that's just he doesn't fight through enough he just gets washed and then Lawrence is able to come forward and do this now uh, Dent again, just throwing his shoulder instead of fundamental tackles. This is just really poor. And again, with the way that they've been, with some of the tackle drills that I've seen from early in practice and social media, I'm not real thrilled with, with some of those. And then here's what's great. It's third and five. Watch Hamsa. Nice big hit. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. First down. And look at look at Lawrence. Yeah, yeah. First down. That's what he says. Read his lips. First down. Because you are celebrating that. Oh yeah. Yeah. First down. Mm-hmm. Well. Shouldn't be talking if uh, if they're getting a first down. And then, well, uh, that's a special throw. <laughs> Thank you.
bring in the blitz. Don't get to him. You've got a corner that's out leveraged. That's tough. This is man across, basically. That's really hard. And this is, th th you notice they went with a bigger corner here. This is, uh, this is Bolden to try to take away the, sl the uh, fade. And he shows fade, comes, comes inside, and that's not bad coverage. I mean, you're in pretty good shape. You don't want to lose, your in lose to the inside there, but he's not in terrible shape. It's just when you've got a quarterback that can make that throw retreating, phew, well, it's a different ball game they're playing. Could have gone to either side here. That's just too easy, and it's because, again, there aren't very many quarterbacks in the country that make this make this play. You got six man rush. You got a spy here. A little robber. There's just not much you can do. Sometimes you tip your cap. That's that's not bad coverage, to be honest. And they got what they wanted in terms of getting the the one on one with the uh, with the backer. But the backer gets stoned. Good job by the blocker. That's a di that's a dime of a throw. <laughs> we haven't looked at a whole lot of running game stuff, but this this pretty much tells everything you need to see. Watch Clemson's interior is not that great. Watch Brady Scott. Watch Bavion Johnson here. Oh Brady. That's um less than ideal. Brady Scott is let's see, the line of scrimmage is the uh thir thirty four. Brady Scott is at the is a yard deep when the he's two yards deep when the ball is handed off. He's three yards deep when the ball carrier gets to him. Brady Scott is three yards deep in the backfield when LeBourne gets to him. And here's the other thing. I know I highlighted Baby on Johnson. The reason I highlighted him is they are blocking a 250-pound, 255-pound defensive end here. And it's a combo block with him and Lucas. Their job is to push this guy off his spot. Scott's job is just to make sure that he doesn't get pushed back here by the one-on-one -on -one here. Notice how much ground they gain on this 250-pound defensive end. You've got both Baby on Johnson and Lucas. They're stoned at the line of scrimmage by the defensive end. That is so discouraging. Look at that. That That's so bad that you have two 320 pounders or two 315 pounders blocking a 250 pounder and they can't move him. But look at the pad level. He's low. Both Lucas and Baby on Johnson are too high. But Johnson, look at where he's blocking from. He's he's trying to titty bump him. You can't do that. Same thing with Scott. He has to be... He, he totally has no leverage when he makes contact here. He's got no strength in that st second step, which has got to be your power step. And then he just gets pushed back. That's just really poor. Probably hear my daughter in the background there. Got scared by the Roomba turning on. <laughs> So, tight front, and it's not awful by the interior. It's not very good by, that's still too wide. Better here by the, by the backer actually being in position right here 
to handle that edge. He recognizes where the edge is going to be. Not bad. He's in his gap. Everybody's in their gaps. Back heads to the front side and over pursuit. It's actually pretty good by the freshman here. Not bad. Not bad by several of the guys on the front side, but the back side, when you pursue, you have to pursue with discipline. Can't get upfield too quickly. And, well, they do. I mean, again, this is one of those things where when you're playing Clemson, they're going to get some just because they're so good. I mean, this is – that's an NFL throw right there. That's a throw that a lot of NFL quarterbacks can't make. You have the right blitz on the backside, bringing a corner and the edge guy. They've got a guy coming on the backside, and he's going to get to, to Lawrence, but Lawrence is able to make this throw on the move. Look at how tight that window is. I mean, this is so close to being – almost any other quarterback in the country makes that throw, and that's a pick. Gant gets underneath that. But Lawrence throws a dart. I mean, this is – defense is really good here, actually. This is – this is such a dart. I mean, look how tight that window is. And to hit, make that throw on the run – okay, tip your cap. Once again, that's a dime. And here you're just in quarters. And they're just running a, a little dig route. Safety has to be in a little better position. He's got to protect the inside. But that's still a dime. That is such a dime. Dent struggled in this game. And once again, picking on the picking on the youngster, on Bolden. They went with the big corners down. Uh, you know, I like what they did. Where you've got you know your six one corner, you've got uh, you've got Samuels down here. I don't like the the jam technique here from Samuels. He, he's beat on the fade. That's 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 poor technique off the line of scrimmage. He doesn't move his he doesn't move his feet, and he jams with the outside hand. I don't like that. Should be jamming with the inside here, and then you know he's in good position. But they're they're going double slants all the way here. And Bolden, once again, he gets he buys the uh, – he's in there to stop the fade because he's the bigger corner, and he buys that, and Lawrence makes a great, great throw. And this is just an easy read. He gets inside, and you see him run, take the outside, bam, easy. 28 to nothing before you can blink. Watch Baby on Johnson on this play. Baby on Johnson is four yards in the backfield when Akers is getting to him. So weak. That's just, that's, he's getting ragdolled. Now keep in mind, North Carolina doesn't have a great center right now. They're starting centers out. And they, they, they were able to block Clemson inside. That's something. So Scott isn't able to get to the backer. Johnson gets ragdolled and pushed into the backfield. There's nothing you can do. And Johnson looks so stiff here. He's playing high. He's trying to titty bump. And look how high those hips are. You got to get your hips down, son. You got to roll those hips. Otherwise, you're going to get run through. There's nothing you can do if you're acres here.
just watch the left tackle here. This is better than it was last year, but you're still against a probable first round defensive end down the line, and that's just not fair. Just survive. Feel like I'm in Tropic Thunder. So good pressure here from from Florida State. Josh Brown gets a good gets a good pressure, does a good job causing a dumb throw and an even better play by Hamsa. Good match across the board by Florida State's underneath coverage. They did a good job coverage-wise over the course of this game. This is a good play, and they did a good job pretty much the whole game. So they get the turnover, and then that's a great, great play by Hamsa. Dumb decision by the Elf. And then it's third and 18, and you decide to fumble it out of bounds even, even more. So let's take advantage of that turnover, huh? The four-man rush. He should be sitting here longer. There's no reason to bail out of the pocket. If he stays here for a while longer, he's fine. Why is he running? Now, he has to come back here because he's ineligible. So they went... They went... Uh, ineligible receiver here. So there's three receivers in the route. There's nobody open, but he should not be scrambling like that at that point. And then, you know, hold on to the football and he's had a fumble problem his whole career. So won't break this down. There's no reason to break that one down. And here's the little, uh, Y sneak across on the jet and then underneath. This is what uh, has gotten Florida State a couple times this year. They actually do a pretty good job on it here, but, you know, second and four, they get the first down. But what is Samuels doing in terms of tackling? He's coming up, throwing the shoulder, no, no arms, just poor tackling technique. Little draw play here. And that's um, not good by by Warner. First of all, he's dropping back too quickly. He's got to play run first. But secondly, that's a bad angle. And then, um, yeah. Hmm. Better job here on the... Uh, On the quarterback, on third and goal here, playing inside out. You'd like to see tighter from Gainer. That should have been tighter, and it should have been a, a instead of a three-yard gain, it should have been a, a maybe a one-yard gain. And that's pretty good by the defense here. This is just a little bit of pride. Good to see him playing hard this late, when this game's basically over already. And that's Hamsa coming in and making a play to get the ball out. But this is where Dent shows his speed, catching up to this from the back end. It's pretty good. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get out of here to the second half. After this one, this is uh, the unfortunate turnover. And Blackman coming in to make the tackle after a foolish decision trying to get that ball out here. If anything, that ball should go right there, right now. Get that ball out to Helton, underthrow him into the sideline, and you got a chance because he's got a guy playing over top of him. That's where that ball should have gone. He's trying to get greedy, makes a really poor throw, and then comes in to try to make that. And that's not how knees are supposed to bend. And it's unfortunate. I'm not going to watch this uh, closer because it's um, sad to see. Yeah.
good job by the defense, you know, actually making a, making a stand here late. We talked about it in the pregame. If you can make them kick, they can't. And they got some tr trouble there. But and LeBorn had some success in this game. You got to give him credit. And I've I've heard some good things in terms of his approach this year. He's he's handled himself much better than in prior years. So uh, so that's that's a real plus. Hopefully some growth from the from the young man. This should have been a touchdown. This is a really good play call. Back up the sideline. You've got actually a. Son, you can't be that obvious about the uh, about the pick, but that's an easy touchdown. But Blackman is making this throw off the back foot. You can't hurry this. This needs to be. You need to be push off the back foot, and then the front foot should be on the ground when you make this throw, and you're going to have a better, a little bit better touch. Make the throw down the field, and that's a touchdown. Suddenly, it's if you've got the two throws that they should have made so far, it's 28 to 14, and it's a very different game. It might even be 21 to 14, but quarterback play kind of matters. Better against the run against the run here. See, I think they made an adjustment in terms of uh, where they're putting their strength here. Still gets first down, but better. Not better that time. And again, the tackling from the second level is just so bad. This one's Hamsa, who doesn't miss as many, but... Again, watch the center. And that's just... If you're the backer here, you have to trigger now. Get downhill through this hole now. You should be in the backfield. You can't let yourself get blocked there. This is just too late from Dontavious Jackson. You see what's happening right now? Get downhill. That should be you should be making the tackle right there. But instead, you get reached. And it turns into a big play. I mean, they're that close to this being you know, pretty good. And now you get the, once again, a nice tendency breaker. And Amari Rogers makes this look really easy. Here's what I want to point out, though, about their offensive line. Watch this. Here and here. Offensive tackle up the field. Look at that. Offensive your center's up the field. They're making they're making blocks 30 yards upfield. That's a luxury. That's um not good. Thrown not only into double coverage, but thrown straight to the safety. This ball's really got to go here. I'm going to wrap this up here in a moment because at this point, this game's over. I'm going to go forward to a couple others. So here we've got a, a play where they blitz off the edge. There are two guys coming. Blackman does a good job recognizing what's happening in terms of these guys are blitzing. The place I'd like to see him come is actually, well, I mean, it's okay to go to, go to LeBorn. You just can't throw off the back foot here. Throws it right into the into the corner, and that's 42. I'm not going to focus too much on the rest of this. I'm going to get to the uh, LeBorn piece. So, oh yeah, they got they did get the fo forced fumble. Forgot about that. This is a uh, big difference when you've got 11 on the field in terms of the the edge. Much better in the second half there. But I want to get to uh, LeBorn's touchdown. There's not much use in watching the rest of this, but I do want to I do want to flag a couple things. I'm going to get to this touchdown and then LeBourne's. So this is Hornybrook on a little slant to Terry, and this is another bad throw. I mean, this one is almost as far behind him as the as the other one was uh, on uh, to Harrison that became an interception. But Terry's a good enough athlete that he's able to.
go in with this. All right. That ball's got to be thrown out here. Instead, it's thrown inside, and, you know, there you go. But he's he's good enough. All right, let's go ahead and move on to LeBorn. Take a look here. I don't know why you have Akers on the field and Terry on the field at 8.36 in the fourth quarter. Not happy about that. Not happy about the starters being out there at this point on, on defense. So here you have uh, not bad from the secondary there. All right, it's a really nice catch by uh, DJ Matthews. All right, here we go. So we're gonna get to LeBourne's touchdown. And notice this is against the backups. They finally get nice combo block up front. The difference is they're not getting absolutely their butts kicked by the uh, interior here. Guards aren't in the backfield. And then LeBourne is a twitchy dude. We've talked about that before. He is twitchy. He's not, you know, going to run away from you necessarily, but here he's fast enough to put that away and uh, really good to see him get a touchdown here. Hopefully he's able to uh, continue moving forward and he you know again twitchy when he gets especially with it between the tackles that's really where his strength is and a couple last things let's highlight there's the guy that should be florida state's offensive tackle right now left tackle best left tackle prospect on the team is right there number 97 malcolm lamar watch him move that's not that's not an elite defensive tackle prospect folks He's playing too high. He's a little little slow for that position. But just look at the movement and the frame and how long he is for playing the other side of the ball. He's got all those tools right here again. He looks like Rod Johnson moving around. And one last one to highlight that again. Watch Lamar. This is an offensive tackle right here running. If he can move, if they can get him to move to the offensive side of the ball, that'll be like getting a five-star offensive tackle commit. Because that frame, that size, that movement, that right there is the best tackle on the team, potentially. He just he looks like a tackle. It's, that's what he needs to be playing, and he needs to make a business decision. All right, we're going to go ahead and wrap it there. As always, want to thank all of you for uh, for your support and uh, really appreciate uh, really appreciate everything. And um, hopefully, this was less painful than it might have been otherwise. But uh, they could be a lot better. We'll 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 see uh, we'll see what happens against Wake Forest.